This is Awareness Explorers. Welcome back, friends, to Awareness Explorers. We're excited to have you. I'm thrilled to have a guest explorer today that I've been diving into her work the last couple of years. It's Dr. Judith Blackstone, the founder of the realization process. But before we introduce Judith, I want to say hello to Brian and how are you doing? I'm doing very well, Jonathan. Uh, we're having our very first snowstorm of the, I wouldn't call it a storm. It's just a little flurry of the year here in New York City. Uh huh. And we've both been cramming, uh, reading all of Judith's books that we possibly can. And that's been fun. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about our guest explorer. Uh, Judith Blackstone, PhD, is an innovative spiritual teacher and psychotherapist. She developed the realization process, which is an embodied approach to non-dual spiritual realization. She's the author of several books, including The Enlightenment Process, and I believe her most recent book, Trauma and the Unbound Body. Yes. Well, welcome to Awareness Explorers, Judith. It's great to have Thank you here. Thank you. Thank you. As I said, I'm, I'm particularly uh, knowledgeable about your work. I think I've read five of your six books, oh. and I've taken many of your classes. So um, I actually know what I'm talking about this time, uh, That's hopefully. Let's, <laughs> let's hope that I do. That's yeah, right. So um, for people who don't know anything about the realization process, how do you describe what you came up with in your set of practices? Yeah, the realization process is basically a series of practices for uncovering in ourselves a very subtle, undivided experience of consciousness. I call it an experience. It's, a, you know, it's, it's experienced as a dimension of ourselves. We experience it pervading our body and our environment at the same time. And that's why it, it, I put it in the category of non-dual, of oneness. Pervading our body, it's experiences the ground of our individual being. So it does contribute very much to our personal healing, our psychological healing, our relational healing. And pervading our environment gives us an actual experience of oneness of our own being with everything around us. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things, you know, we interview a lot of teachers and we've all read books and non-dual and Advaita and all those things. What I really appreciate about your work, besides um, the fact that it's very embodied, is that you have a lot of innovative methods and ideas that have helped me to experience uh, what you call fundamental consciousness. Um, and that term you define a little bit differently than just pure awareness. Can you describe how it's different? Yeah, you know, these are just words, obviously, but I use the word consciousness in order to distinguish it from the kind of awareness that people talk about when they make this sort of gesture on their head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awareness. Uh, fundamental consciousness is something that we open to with our whole being, right? We could call it awareness, but I call it fundamental consciousness uh, because it, we open to it in, through our heart. So it has a kind of a, even a, a detectable, very subtle quality of, of emotional ground there, of love. And even the detectable, we open to it through the, <clears throat> excuse me, through the bottom of our body, physical sensation, mm -hmm. not only as an aspect of our oneness, but an aspect uh, of our individual oneness, but an aspect of our oneness with everything else. So it's a very rich space. It can be experienced as simply clear through transparency. And it can also be experienced as that kind of rich blend of this ground of our being. Go on, Brian. Well, I just finished reading the enlightenment process and I was fascinated by it and fascinated to see that I've been something that I've been thinking about now for the few years is covered very well in your book, which is it's sort of like the major missing piece in a lot of non-dual spirituality, which is the body. And for someone like me whose first encounter 
with this area would say be Nisargadatta Maharaj, for example, or Ramana Maharshi. And I, I remember someone writing that their first realization when they were studying with Nisargadatta was, I am not the body. And of course, also my Catholic background, the body was something that was almost regarded as sinful. And so uh, I think that your take on including the body and not transcending it or being away from it or saying, I am not the body uh, is absolutely fascinating and, and effective. Um, so, how, so what are your thoughts about including the body in spiritual realization? I mean, it has a lot of different meanings, embodiment. Uh, you know, one meaning very important is that we can carry our realization into our daily lives, that, you know, everything we do is part, uh, is affected by our non-dual realization, our sense of oneness with everything. In the, re in the realization process, embodiment means that we actually experience our body as made of fundamental consciousness. So in a way, it's not a negation of the nati nati, Advaita Vedanta, I am not my body, I'm not my emotions, I'm not my thoughts. And they keep going and keep going and keep going. They get to what am I? And, you know, Ramana Maharshi's work, I think he does come very close to going, I am fundamental consciousness. It doesn't mean that we don't have emotions, right? And that's really important. We have thoughts. We have emotions. We are just not that changing content. We're something deeper than that. And as the embodiment of fundamental consciousness, we actually experience that we're we're made of yeah flesh and bone and so forth. We're made of energy streaming, and we're also made of uh, a stillness, uh, an amazing luminous kind of stillness uh, that feels like who we are. That I call fundamental consciousness. And you take it uh, even further uh, when you talk about the vertical core of the body, which is, I think, a absolutely fascinating concept that a lot of us um, who have been uh, in a sort of a not this, not this, netty, netty type of thing um, don't consider. And, and I, so could you tell us a little bit about your concept of the vertical core of the body? Well, the vertical core of the body is mentioned in in Hindu yoga, certainly as Shashumna, um, you know, the chakras are conceived of as being along it in the Hindu system. In Buddhism, in Tibetan Buddhism, it's mentioned, it's called the central channel, obviously an English translation. And it arrives in both of those traditions because it is an entranceway into the ground of being fundamental conscious that I call fundamental consciousness that's called Rigpa in Tibetan Buddhism, uh, that's called Brahman or self or pure consciousness in the Hindu system. It's an entranceway into that most subtle undivided dimension of ourselves. So it's a very important. Now I was you know, taught uh, years ago that you couldn't mention the core because that was Tantra and Tantra was something different than non-duality and you know, they should never touch. <laughs> but of course, um, it, that's not true. Uh, when we make that deep inward contact with ourselves, we get to this very, very subtle core of ourselves that enables us to let go of our habitual grip, at least to some extent, on our own being and on the world around us, on our experience of the world around us. So it's a very important aspect of ourselves. You know, I uh, studied Tantra and other disciplines, and it, I think of the central core, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the term microcosmic orbit, which would be like from Qigong type of things. And I found it interesting that you mentioned uh, that you just focus on the upward energy of that core. And yeah. I was wondering uh, what, why that was the case. And uh, I started to do it, and I found it very, very effective that you know, it might, I started to feel very high very quickly as I got in touch with that core and just felt like an upward surge of energy. But that seemed to be uh, somewhat new to uh, your uh, particular brand. Yeah, that question comes up a lot and rightfully so. 
And I do it because it's effective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's why I do it. I think, yeah, you know, people say, well, can we open to a downward current? Yeah, we can. Uh, when we open to that upward current, which seems to be our most subtle energy, mixes with our breath, becomes prana, becomes our most subtle, subtle energy, um, then I think that all the other energies fall into place in a way. You, you, you know, our energy system does seem to be designed on a spectrum from dense to subtle, and there's so many different currents. And, uh, each of the major traditions talks about different types of currents. Uh, but this upward, very fine, like thread of energy that comes up through us vertically uh, seems to be the most subtle and opens us to that most subtle energy. Mm -hmm. That's why I do it. I, it. You know, a lot of the questions that come up um, in the realization process are only answered like that, you know, because it works. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the best answer. You don't get a better answer than that. It, it's not a metaphysical system, which is disappointing to a lot of my students. You know, they're like, <laughs> finally, we're going to know how the universe works, how it all works. Uh, no, I, I have no idea how it all works. But I, I, I have learned over the years how to open to fundamental consciousness. And mm -hmm. so that's all I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, another distinction that I found really, really helpful um, was like, like, let's say you might say, uh, uh, inhabit your foot. And the word inhabit is very different than become aware of your foot or focus on your foot. And I'm wondering how you might help someone to experience inhabiting their hands or their foot versus having a sense from their head that they are trying to focus on the sensations there? When I'm working with people who are new to the work, I often start with that, um, with uh, just simply, you know, rest your hands in your lap, become aware of your hands. You may notice by becoming aware of your hands how cold or hot they are, how tense. And you may also notice that you're being aware from the top down. And now enter into your hands. Let yourself experience that you're actually living within your hands, that you're present within your hands, that the hands are conscious of themselves from inside, all of that kind of language. And it's a real difference. So there's no way I can actually, uh, I mean, if I'm in person, <laughs> I've been taught in person now for almost, you know, for a long time. If I'm in person, I'm almost forgetting what I used to do in person. But in person, I would put a hand on either side of an ankle, for example, and say, uh, feel that you're between my hands. And I'm not sending them energy or anything. I'm just giving them uh, walls, you know, to enter into between. And now I find sometimes I can do that. They can do that themselves. Put a hand on either side of their own ankles. Feel that you're between your own ankles. And that can be helpful. Uh, but many people can simply feel the difference, can notice that they're aware of their hands and then enter into their hands. So that's something very different. And because inhabiting the body puts us in touch right away with this unitive consciousness, this undivided consciousness, even just entering into the hands tends to enter us into our whole body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it, I find it actually is an interesting process of, of surrender because you kind of have to surrender your mental faculties to really enter into the physicality of being in your hands or your feet or whatever? You know, I, I, I shy away from that kind of formalization because I don't want people to stop thinking or to feel like this is some sort of headless state. Mm -hmm. You know, the head is part of the body and part of our being, a very important part of our being. So, you know, I don't want people to sort of experience themselves from the neck down or not thinking, which has to be a suppression. Right. I mean, it's true that our thoughts, our habitual tape loops thin out, but then we get better thoughts, newer thoughts um, that swim through the stillness. So it's not an unthinking state at all, although it might in that very original, that first moment mm -hmm. require that. Right. Require the old, OK, I'm not going to analyze this. I'm just going to do it <laughs> kind right, of thing. Right. Um, I don't really think of it as the physical body because it's the body of fundamental consciousness. Mm. 
you, right? So, um, and that body of fundamental consciousness is everywhere in, our, in us. So when we experience within us the body of fundamental consciousness, we're not necessarily, we're experiencing like everyone's body, the universe's body, is, is that how? <laughs> That may be. <laughs> but, <laughs> I know that. Okay, you, we're getting into <laughs> metaphysics here. <laughs> and you're right. I am more interested in the experience of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you, know, we're, you know, what's most important is we're experiencing our own being. Uh, and that's a, a wonderful thing. And, and surprisingly, maybe a new thing for most of us on the planet. You know, our own being. Uh, it does help us feel one with other beings. You know, there, it does seem to be one ground. And when we're with another person, we experience that one undivided consciousness pervading us both at the same time as we experience it pervading our own body. That's a wonderful thing for some of us sensitive types who tend to give ourselves over in relationships that we can actually still be embod embodied as our own being, knowing ourselves because this fundamental consciousness reveals everything it pervades. So knowing our own needs and desires, and preferences and responses at the same time that we actually experience oneness with yeah. actual oneness with another person. Well, that's one of the wonderful ways uh, uh, that you have of describing things in that you're not negating you're not you're not negating anything you're not negating the mind yeah. thoughts are part of our experience you're not negating the body you're not saying the ego has to disappear which is a famous yeah idea that a lot of spiritual seekers have oh the ego has to disappear but in in, in it sounds like instead what happens is um we somehow become more fully our authentic self that's right. That's right. And that's what's so interesting about it, you know, because we uncover it. It's, uh, uh, you know, in, in our postmodern world, we can't even really say that, you know, everything is, you know, something we're constructing. But this doesn't feel like that at any rate. It feels very much like we've uncovered it, like we've hit the bedrock. And it, it, it emerges uh, to us as a, with the impact of authenticity. It feels like, oh yeah, finally I'm real. All those social, you know, masks and so forth. Even feels, and you know, here we go into you know naive realism and all of that. But it even feels like we're finally seeing things at least more like they actually are, with less projection, uh, less distortion, and less filtering. Right? You meant you less talk filter. about that, yeah. That's right. Less filter. That's right. The filters fall away. And yes, we, we feel we feel like, oh, this is who I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is one of the things I like about it is that you're not negating anything. Um, one question I have is, you know, since a lot of the system involves, quote, inhabiting the body, um, how do you distinguish, say, just, you know, you feel something versus in a way, it seems like there's a deeper level, which more is of vibration or energy. And how do you how do you help people to get to these subtler levels? Well, that's what the whole thing is about. Uh, it, you know, all of the practices go towards that, going even to a deeper level than vibration and energy, uh, to this stillness. Although, uh, when we get to that stillness, we do get to the most subtle level of our energy level. So there's this kind of radiance uh, that, that coexists with mm -hmm. the stillness. But of course, our energy also moves through that stillness. But, you know, we, you know, I mean, one exercise I do pretty much near the beginning uh, when people first come to the work is take a moment to experience yourself as physical matter. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're in a room with other human beings, you'll feel, every, you'll feel everybody separate into separate little clumps of physical matter is so interesting. And of course, that's the way maybe we can say, I don't know, 80% of people experience themselves, uh, you know, as a separate clump of physical matter, a moving around with other clumps. Then experience yourself as energy. Take a moment to experience yourself as streaming, 
vibrating, pulsing energy. And many sensitive people, myself included, grow up, experience themselves as energy. And the thing about energy is we mush together with everything around us as energy, you know. And then, so the third step is now experience yourself as the stillness of fundamental consciousness. It's another level of attunement, a more subtle level of attunement. Hmm. And they don't erase each other. Obviously, you're still going to be physical matter. You know, you still bang against things, you know. You still feel energy moving even more fluidly, even more deeply, because fundamental consciousness is a dimension of disentanglement, of non-obstruction. Right? So when we know ourselves as that, uh, then our energy moves through us more fluidly, our emotions move more deeply, our thoughts move more fluidly, creativity, so forth. So, um, so it, doesn't, it doesn't stop the energy at all, but it gets underneath it in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that stillness, it, when we, seems like when we touch it, we start to take on some of the, I guess, for lack of a better word, the qualities of it, or, or the fact that that stillness includes what we experience, but isn't touched or changed or affected by what we experience. That's right. That's right. It, it means that our, our tolerance for life actually increases. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. we don't have to, we don't have to limit the impact of life, either pleasurable or painful. Because it can, we can experience it move through us and change, keep changing, and while we remain this basic fundamental stillness, which is a beautiful experience to have. Um, you know, one of uh, my uh, tendencies is I always ask people, um, "What can people do in five or ten seconds? Say while they're walking to the car, they're doing their dishes." Uh, they're doing email, which is where, you know, a large part of our life is, you know, the realization process has amazing guided meditations um, that you offer in your books. Uh, but I'm wondering if you can speak to how a person can take what they might experience in these guided meditations into uh, talking on the phone or whatever it is. Yeah, well, two things, you know, in response to that. And one is that with consistent practice, and and I don't mean for 10 years in the cave, but just, just for a little while, um, you stabilize there. And that's actually the technical Buddhist term for it. You stabilize in non-duality. Mm -hmm. uh, then whether you're talking on the phone or whatever you're doing, uh, you experience that that you're in your core. In fact, we dwell, we live in this, core of ourselves when we know ourselves as the pervasive space of fundamental consciousness. So you're always somehow centered and at your deepest perspective and at your deepest connection at the same time uh, with everything around you. So, so that stabilizes, it, it becomes unchanging, you're just there. However, in the process or under duress, you know, you can always, there's a lot of things you can do once you know the techniques. You can find your heart center and do the core breath there. I'll do that at the end of our, our interview today, you know. Uh, you know, you know, so you can anchor there. You can anchor in the center of your head or your pelvic center and do the core breath there so that you put yourself in the center. Put yourself yeah. in the, So if you're feeling bombarded or agitated, you can put yourself there. Uh, you can feel that you're in your feet and ground there. And we have a whole grounding, foundational grounding practices that we do um, in, in the realization process. So there's a number of things that you can touch into uh, briefly when uh -huh. you need to. Um, do you, can I, in, go on. Oh, can I add my, my experience with that? Uh, yes, because yes. Uh, after reading the enlightenment process, I found your exercises amazingly effective, even just reading them you know, much less doing them with your eyes closed. Um, yeah. And one of my favorite ones was the one where we contact the three centers in our head, in our heart, in our pelvic yeah. area, and breathe from there. And then sort of, I, I'm not sure exactly how you put it, but become aware of all three at the same time. Yeah. And after I tried that, I discovered 
that I could then, at the drop of a hat, walking around, remember that, do it, and feel it within seconds. Yes. Well, you've probably done a bunch of other practice for a while. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Full disclosure. But 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 that one I hadn't. Uh, and yeah. And I, yes. I, I, yeah. I that's. It. I'll do that. I'll do that for of you know at the end today. Um, yeah, so that's something that you can always tune into in a moment of, of need of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, in um, in some of your books, you talk about attuning to qualities. Uh, qualities might be bliss or stillness, uh, various qualities. And can you? And, and what <laughs> the funny thing is, as I'm reading your books, and you you'll say something like, "Well, attuned to bliss." And then I'll find I'm feeling bliss all of a sudden, you know. Uh, <laughs> and you're also very easy. <laughs> true. <laughs> but, you know, um, I haven't always been that way. And sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. I might feel, have a lot of thoughts going on and it's not so easy. So how do you, how can you um, tell people what is attuning or how might they get better at attuning to various qualities? Just practice. I mean, it's just practice. Uh, there's there's two different attunement to qualities practice in the realization process. One is attuning to the ground of awareness, emotion, and physical sensation as aspects of fundamental consciousness, and all three at once. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, actually, I'm I'm saying there's two. There's two. Anyway, there's that one. And that's, that's to help people open with their whole being to fundamental consciousness. So they're not just opening through their head or through their heart if they're emotionally based people, but through their whole, through their whole being. So there's that one. In the main practice that we do, inhabiting the body, we do that practice of inhabiting the body so that we can let go from within the whole body into the ground of fundamental consciousness. Um, but in that practice, we also tune to qualities within the body that, that, that specifically seem to be there. I give words to them, you know, which are just my own words for them. But, but when we inhabit ourselves, there, there do seem to be qualities there, power in our midsection, love in our chest, you know, the internal the being, our being seems to possess qualities. So, so we attune to them. Um, and, and just as I said before, in attuning to them, they, they bloom, they blossom, and then they become stable. So we're always there, right? Mm -hmm. So we always can feel our power, right? We may tune it up in a, a situation where we feel a little threatened or something, but, but it's always there. It's always supporting us, right? With the experience of our sexuality, um, the experience of, of our love, the experience of the quality of our voice. I tune to those qualities because it is those qualities that we tend to shut down in reaction to overwhelming experience as children. You know, we're disempowered uh, when, when we have loss that we don't get to mourn the, the voice or the, you know, when we have to keep keep down our voice or, or clamp down on our tears or keep out food when we're not hungry and we're being fed. Uh, all of that tends to clamp down on our throat. So tuning to these qualities helps us open more fully, but then they stabilize because they really are there, mm -hmm. right? So, so, it's, so it's just a matter of doing the practices again and again mm -hmm. until you just feel them all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. We well, brought the subject of... Uh you know, closing down with traumatic events of childhood or, or adult life. And uh, your latest book, Trauma and the Unbound Body, talks a lot about how to deal with those traumas. And, um, and I'm wondering uh, what you can say about that, specifically how people can release stuck physical and emotional traumas. A big subject, of course. <laughs> yeah, and, um, you have, and you have 20 seconds. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, just by inhabiting the body and attuning to those qualities and getting in, making inward contact with ourselves to some extent, we recover ourselves from, from trauma. I, the realization process differs from a lot of 
other, um, maybe most other body psychotherapy approaches to healing trauma, the trauma field, in fact, um, which, which usually focuses on the nervous system. And I'm focusing instead on the, on the fascia, on this level of kind of tissue that's everywhere in the body, which means that we can organize ourselves in reaction to events in our lives it, all the way through our body, anywhere in our body, way, way deep in our chest, where, you know, and you know, just this tiny little closing down, shutting down of the heart or shutting down of our vision or our hearing um, through, through, the, through that tissue that's everywhere in our body, which is very susceptible, very sensitive to the mind. Uh, the fascia. So, so I'm working, uh, I'm using the word trauma extremely loosely as anything that's overwhelming for the child, anything that we can't fully experience. So it can be as simple as a face we love suddenly looking angry or sad, right? Uh, so anything that a loud sound, you know, an abrasive picture, you know, a picture that our parents put up in, in all good faith, which, you know, has some kind of caterpillar, you know, from Alice in Wonderland <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> emerging, uh, anything like that, that we've had to sort of, uh, you know, limit ourselves in, in order to keep ourselves intact. It's a wonderful natural ability we have to keep ourselves intact by limiting the impact of abrasive events. And, uh, and most of us can live very normal lives without ever releasing that. Um, of course, more severe trauma, we can actually shut, shut down ability to love, ability to feel sexual pleasure, you know, uh, that really needs to be, really needs to be released. Um, but even if the trauma has been not very much, uh, when we begin to open by inhabiting our body, we the, suddenly the world is much more vivid. <laughs> you know, our emotions. You know, I didn't realize I could just like well up with love whenever I see another human being. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it's a kind of a, it's a kind of freedom. Now, some of our, some of those holding patterns in the fascia will not release just by inhabiting the body or doing the core breath. Uh, and for that, we have a special technique uh, in the realization process called the release technique, which I never teach in a situation like this where I can't see the people. But, but it's, it is using the very subtle focus that we can get for, by being in the subtle vertical core of ourselves and focusing within the tensions. And, um, and so there's all that whole aspect. I think it's coming into the spiritual world altogether, the spiritual field, um, contemporary spiritual field, that psychological healing and spiritual realization are really at the, the become the same process as we move along, right? As we progress, yeah. that you really can't separate them anymore, right? Uh, God knows we've tried. <laughs> we did. We tried. <laughs> we tried. Yeah, and a lot of emergencies and all kinds of things, but. But now I think it's coming more, you know, and a lot of, you know, several of the non-dual teachers are like myself, psychotherapists. You know, we've, we've spent decades sitting with people in pain and we, we know how that's related to the opening to fundamental consciousness. So, um, so it's a very important part of opening, whether you focus on the, you know, however you, however you approach it. Mm -hmm. Well, after all, why do people come to spirituality in the first place? Usually some pain or some part of their experience that they don't want to be experiencing. And yet <laughs> the, the surprising result is that they open to the experience they thought that they didn't want to be experiencing. Yeah. And they are not defended. And you use the word like binding. Uh, it becomes less bound within them. That's right. That's right. We become unbound. And the safety is our contact with ourselves that comes to replace that binding. Mm -hmm. Right? And along with that contact with ourselves, naturally comes loyalty to ourselves. Right? This hurts, I'm going to leave. Right? Uh, you know, self-possession, 
self-acceptance, self-love as, as actual experiences. So, so there, so there's the safety, there's the self-care and the safety. And also being in that core, our perspective actually deepens, right? So life is not just directly impinging on ourselves as so many sensitive people experience, you know. Uh, You've been at this uh, a long time, and I'm wondering if, in an overview way, do you think uh, uh, we're waking up, uh, or, or what, what do you see as the trends? I don't know. You know, I live in America, and that becomes a very hard thing to <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. up and down. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I hope we're going in a good direction. I hope so. I, you know, I have no idea. Uh, uh, I have no idea. I, I mean, the, if you look at the very, 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 very long picture, yes, we're evolving. <laughs> well, something I notice is, um, you know, I, I teach workshops uh, on this type of stuff sometimes, and it seems like 25 years ago, it would take a while to get people to experience awareness or fundamental consciousness. And now, you know, uh, it might take three minutes. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that may be. I think the wonderful uh, spreading of mindfulness techniques into the into the popular culture uh, that's a that's a wonderful thing. You know that that there have been people. Uh, you know, I feel like my work, ca- you know, builds on that or counters it in some ways. But still, you know, it has it has made uh, the world aware that maybe they're not as mindful as they could be. Right. Mm-hmm. And then even this trauma trend, you know, where trauma has be, just become like a, a buzzword, oh, trauma, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, people who are taking that out into the world in a, in a big way and, get, and having huge platforms about it. That's a wonderful thing. And people are like, oh, maybe I'm traumatized, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> and maybe I shouldn't be treating my son the way my father treated me. It, it, you know, I mean, that, of course, is is wonderful. So, yes, so there must be, there must be a general waking up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And how do you differentiate, um, you know, w- mindfulness is a buzzword as well, in which they say, you know, be aware of your body as you're doing stuff. Do you have any way of explaining that realization process is kind of a deeper level or how do you, how do you differentiate it? I, I do explain that, you know, when, I mean, I, you know, just say, I say it right out, but, you know, we are not, I mean, we're not being aware. We're getting to the ground that is aware everywhere. I think some, I think some Vipassana uh, techniques do get to the ground. So, you know, not to like, you know, just brush them all aside, but, but yeah, we're, we're getting to a level of unitive consciousness that in general isn't, isn't spelled out in mindfulness techniques, mm-hmm. but much better to be mindful than not. It's all in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, no comparison. Really. <laughs> One of my favorite topics, which you uh, talk about a lot in the enlightenment process is the false self. And a lot of times it's hard to get a handle on what that is and how it was created. I mean, you had a a description of it where you talk about um, constrictions in in that create gaps in our ability to experience life and and that those gaps are filled in with false images. And I I found that pretty illuminating and, and, and good, but I was wondering if you could talk a little more about the false self, what it is, how it's created, how it's seen through. How it what? How it is seen through, how we see through. Oh, how we see through. Well, as we release, as we inhabit the body and release those holding patterns, the fascia, just as as, uh, I was talking about, we, you know, some of those compensatory patterns naturally fall away. Uh, sometimes uh, people come because those compensa- to, to the work or to any of our work because those compensatory patterns are no longer working well. You know, uh, one example, of course, is, is power. So p- 
person feels disempowered, but they, you know, disempowered from maybe age two where they've been ridiculed and overpowered and maybe worse, maybe beaten. Um, and so they, you know, have no sense of power at all. They're like, they're just a nothing. And then they go to school and they're surrounded by other, by peers. And um, they have a, you know, they can just become more and more disempowered, or they can create a powerful image that keeps people away, that, mm -hmm. you know, that counters that. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so then, you know, the, then the power comes into the, into the forehead, you know, if, we, if we're, if we're brainy kind of people, we can use that. <laughs> Right, and that, you know it doesn't doesn't really work because we can still feel like we've been punched in the belly, right? <laughs> but right, mm -hmm. so after a while it doesn't work. Uh, but you know, it's, but so that's false self, and it's usually it's usually visible as a holding pattern, as con compensatory holding patterns, um, uh, you know, narcissistic holding inflation patterns, you know, which you know now you know become obvious that they're compensating for and once we let go of those patterns that we feel oh terrible you know actually I feel inferior to everybody in fact I always have felt you know people will say I always have felt inferior in fact uh and then they can feel that as the holding you know as that only pattern we have layers and layers so um yeah uh, so, so many examples you know the 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 face of social please please accept me, you know, or social politeness or, you know, uh, when, when that falls away, you know, and then we, we can feel our real, our actual face. It's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing. And we might not be so accommodating anymore. And, and then we have to, we have to deal with that. You know, how do I bridge the people without that social false patterning? You know? Right. It sounds like the false patterning is, is, is like, or the false self is like masks that we wear to interact with the world to protect um, the, 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 the defended emotion and that beneath the mask is the real self. That's right, that's right. Sometimes beneath the mask is the holding pattern based on the trauma. There could be many layers down that's before right. you and get to the center. And beneath that is right, the sure. real self, yeah, right. that's right. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. I want to uh, make sure we have plenty of time for your guided meditation because I found them to be so helpful. Um, uh, and in a moment, I'm going to ask for any anything we may have missed, but I do want to just acknowledge our Patreon supporters. You make this possible. And if you're interested in supporting us and getting a lot of extra goodies from us, uh, extra interviews, guided meditations, and such, go to patreon.com forward slash awareness explorers. And thanks for all the support and the emails and uh, Brian and I really appreciate it. But um, Judith, I wanna make sure that there was no gaping holes in anything we missed or anything in terms of, of uh, something you'd like to add before we do a guided meditation. Uh, no, that seems quite complete to me. Yep. Well, that's good news. Yeah, the qualities, the <laughs> core, the, the space. <laughs> and uh, how can people learn about uh, your work? Uh, you have a website or what? what? Yeah, the website's best, uh, realizationprocess.org. Uh -huh. And that has, that has everything. Great, great. Do you have any final uh, words, uh, Brian, before we go into a guided meditation? Just to say thank you, Judith, for sharing this with us. I'm really looking forward to our listeners hearing about it. And I just want to let them know that my firsthand experience, just simply reading the book and not having training as Jonathan did in person, really had a deep effect. So um, please yeah. look into the realization process in Judith's books. Yeah, I was wondering if you had some like hoodoo voodoo in there because you would say something like uh tune to fundamental consciousness and there i'd be and then you know and feel your bliss <laughs> like, you no know. no that's that's on you <laughs> that's, that's on, on you, you <laughs> okay I'll, I'll 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 take credit for that one then <laughs> anyways um 
uh, I hear you have a guided meditation and uh, we are happy to hear that. Sure. I will do the, I'll do the core breath as that came up a number of times in our talk just now. Uh, there are two main practices in the realization process. One is the inhabiting the body and letting go, tuning directly to the pervasive space of fundamental consciousness. That one takes about half an hour. The core breath is much shorter. Uh, so I'm gonna do that one, all right? So if you feel like doing this, come and sit up. Good to do this sitting upright if you can. You can do this eyes open or closed, doesn't matter. Let's start by just focusing on your breathing. Just breathing. An even breath to start with. Yeah. Silently counting three counts to inhale, three counts to exhale, or whatever number is comfortable for you. Smooth, calm breath. Now come down to your feet and feel that you're inside your feet, that you're actually living within your feet, actually present there. And let your breath adjust to being that far down in your body so that your inhale doesn't lift you up away from there. And now take a moment to feel that you're living inside your whole body all at once. Right? Contact everywhere within your body all at once. We start this core breath by finding the center of your head. And this point is deep within the internal space of your head. So it's not the forehead and it's not the top of the head. It's deep within the internal sphere of your head, somewhere between your ears. Just by being in the center of your head, it enters you into your wholeness. See if you can feel that. It gives you access everywhere in your body at once, right? without leaving the center of your head. And now bring your breath into the center of your head and back out again. The breath comes in through both nostrils, makes a single stream of air that can go right through to the center of your head. And the exhale is a release, it goes wherever it goes. And now initiate the breath within the center of your head. So instead of bringing the breath to the center of the head, we're now starting the breath in the center of your head. As if you have air there that you could breathe. Just by breathing within the center of your head, you may feel a resonance down through your whole core. That's all the way down to the center of the bottom of your torso. But just by breathing in the center of your head. Now find your heart center, and this point is in the center of your chest, 
but deep in the core of your body. So as deeply inward as you can focus within your chest without strain. Also known as the heart chakra. You can leave go your awareness of the center of the head and you're just in the heart center. And now initiate the breath from within your heart center. So the breath starts there. It's like as if you had a little tiny nose, a little tiny nose right in the core of your chest and you could breathe there. And just by breathing within your heart center, you may feel a resonance through your whole core that's gonna be now up to your head and down to the base of your torso at the same time. Very gentle vibration within your whole core just by breathing in your heart center. Take a moment to experience your whole internal space, the internal space of your whole body, just by being in your heart center. Just by being there, it gives you access everywhere in your body at once. Now find your pelvic center. And this point is in the center of your pelvis, but deep in the core of your body. So as deeply inward as you can focus within your pelvis without strain. And just by being in your pelvic center, just by being there, it enters you into your wholeness, gives you access everywhere in your body at once. Initiate the breath within your pelvic center. Right? Start the breath there, even before you feel it move in your nose or your lungs. See if you can feel it move within the pelvic center. And just by breathing within your pelvic center, you may be able to feel a resonance, a very gentle vibration throughout your whole core. Now we're gonna do all three points. Find the center of your head again. Find the center of your head and your heart center at the same time. Now, if you can, and this can take some practice, add in the pelvic center as well. If you can't find all three points today, that's fine. Just do two. But if you can, find the center of your head, your heart center, and your pelvic center. And just by being in those three points, it enters you into your wholeness, gives you access everywhere in your body at once. Very gently initiate the breath within all three points. Again, just do two if that's, if that's what you can do today, it's fine. These are practices. So as you practice, it becomes much easier. If you can, initiating the breath from within all three points. And it's a very subtle breath, very thin, like a thread of breath within all three points. Just by breathing within all three points, you may be able to feel a very gentle vibration throughout the whole internal space of your body. See if you can, vibration in your arms, vibration in your legs, everywhere. Now, if your eyes are closed, open them. Find these three points with your eyes open, or two, if that's what you're doing. Center of your head, heart center, and if you can, the pelvic center as well. Eyes are open. 
even with your eyes open, just being in those three points gives you access everywhere in your body at once. Take a moment to experience your environment from this core of yourself. Right? Usually we experience the world from the surface of ourselves. So you may find this deepens your perspective a little bit. And now initiate your breath from within all three points, if you can, or two. Feeling very gentle vibration everywhere in your body at once. Right? We'll sit like that for just a minute, one minute. Gentle, subtle, thin breath within all three points. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it was marvelous. <laughs> yes, I really love that one. Thank you for, for doing that, <laughs> sharing that with us. Thank you. I felt like I did a half hour Qigong workout without having to actually uh, move my butt from my seat, <laughs> which is my preferred that's what, way. That's what we're going that. for. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's been really wonderful to connect with you, Judith, and, and thanks for uh, uh, a lot of years of, of putting this great stuff out there and great methods, and, and I know our listeners will benefit from that. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. It's been lovely. Thank you for being here. And our friends and listeners out there, uh, please tell your friends and family about our you know, free meditations. We have like 80 or 90 of them now at awarenessexplorers.com and uh, all the great episodes. As Brian likes to say, uh, knowing yourself as awareness is the greatest gift you can give to friends and family or something like that, right? That's pretty much it. Okay. I think you hit it on the nose there, Jonathan. Well, it's a, it makes a unique um, a holiday gift. Uh, we could all use a little bit more peace during right. this crazy Gives time. Gives them space to be themselves. Yes, yes. right. Yes. Oh, that is a gift and it's free. Yes. <laughs> so friends, till next time, keep exploring. Keep exploring. Thank you for listening to Awareness Explorers. To learn more, you can check out our website at awarenessexplorers.com. Please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app. We'd love it if you would post a review. And please share our link on Facebook and with family and friends. Because knowing yourself as awareness is the greatest gift you can give yourself or someone you love.